Hi there, I'm playing with old servers again. It's an IBM X3850 model X6 with four Xeon processors, six, uh, 15 cores each, so that's 60 cores or 120 virtual cores. Hyper threading. And the machine is also full with 32 gigabyte RAM sticks, uh, a total of Three uh, terabyte. You can see that here. This machine is remarkably silent even under full load, but more interesting that the electronic features are all the mechanical quirks and tricks that this machine has. I will show it right now. First of all, it has these mechanical handles here four of them on each corner one uh, they are to lift the machine into the rack and yes if you have four people you can do that easily and after the work you can stow them away on the front is space for up to eight uh, disk drives or ssds the upper back plane here is not installed here are the cpu fans you pull this lever here and the fan comes out. There are two fans per CPU module. And of course you can remove the CPU modules, but only when the power is off, of course. Um, and these CPU modules uh, contain one CPU each and uh, 24 RAM modules. So here you can see 12 of them and when we flip it over you can see 12 more so that's 24 in total these are all 32 gigabyte modules the run thing here is a supercapacitor and it provides power to the fold LEDs while the module is out on uh, of the chassis. This is useful because you have an LED next to each RAM module and if you want to know which module is uh, faulty, you press that button and it lights up and you see which module you have to replace. And you cannot see these LEDs when the modules are inside the chassis. So they have this battery button contraption here. If you don't have four CPUs, you need filler panels and these filler panels are pretty big. They look like this one. And it's basically a long funnel for the air. So it guides the air from the front down to this tiny little hole on the back uh, that cools the power supplies. And on the back side we have power supplies, four of them. These are 900 watt models and they have a little spacer next to it because the 1200 watt model is wider and that would fill the entire bay. So for the smaller power supply there are these metal spacers also quite uh, complex uh, thing. They could have taken a piece of plastic but they didn't. These two covers uh, cover some additional PCI space. There are modules you can insert there with, uh, I think, three PCI slots each. So you can add six more PCI slots to your system for any kind of cards, everything you want. PCI slots, yeah. And that's the standard PCI bay here that comes with your machine. If you want it or not, it's included. 
it also has the VGA, the graphics card, uh, and some additional cooling for everything that is on it. So it's basically the I.O. module of this system. Everything USB. That's just a huge air duct. Also a complicated part. Could be easier, but IBM decided to go the complicated way. But if you thought that's everything on the back side, nah, there are more levers, even more levers. You can remove the entire back chassis and these levers have buttons inside the chassis that releases them. But before you can pull this, you have to pull all the CPU modules on the front. Also the entire front cage with the hard drives, the RAID controller and uh, the on-off buttons and the LED and LCD display can be removed. You also see the wires that go to the USB ports on the front. The other wire there is a VGA that is also on the front accessible. You can use the front or the back VGA. It's the same image you get. Uh, the front VGA is more for service technicians that have to operate buttons and see what happens. So that's the RAID controller here with the heatsink and the SAS cable that goes to the four drives in the front. And as you can see there is space for a second backplane with four more drives with a second cable going to the RAID controller. And there is another hidden surprise on the front panel. It's the entire manual or, well, a location guide about what belongs where, what are the part numbers, how to open things and close things. Maybe that's the manual you should read first before you start pulling levers and opening stuff and eventually breaking some stuff. And after removing all the parts of the front on the front we can actually slide this back uh, module here away. And that contains the mid plane, that's the uh, PCB that contains all the connectors from the front, from the back. That's where all the data goes through from every module to every other module. <laughs> 